How's it going everybody? Stabman coming back at you. This time we've got the S's and the S's are going to be a long freaking video. Just prepare yourselves for this madness. Alright? First off we've got, I believe I paid about $4 for this on Black Friday last year and it came, comes with a slipcover that now everybody's looking for and can't find and it's the one you want because it feels like a real baseball and it's a boss and all that. The Sandlot! The Sandlot! This movie is of course nostalgic for me and it's just a great movie. If you like baseball in particular it's great but even those even people who don't like baseball still tend to uh, appreciate this movie at the very least and who can blame them? It's the freaking Sandlot! Next up we have one of my dollar Blu-rays that I still have yet to see, Scenes from a Mall. I got this at the dollar store because it had Woody Allen in it. And I also have Bette Midler. I don't mind Bette Midler, as I showed with Hocus Pocus. But yes, uh, I am somewhat of a fan of Woody Allen. I like some of his movies. I think he's a great auteur. He's a great director. What he does in his personal life, his personal choices, and all that stuff. When it comes to, you know, whether or not he's a uh, pervert, I won't necessarily comment on my thoughts on that because they're unimportant when it comes right down to it. I just, I, uh, even if he was a pervert, he'd still be a fucking amazing artist, an amazing director, and just one of the greatest uh, filmmakers and film lovers of all time. No offense to anybody who might be offended by that statement, but he's a great artist. He's just, he writes amazing dialogue. He plays amazing characters. He directs amazing films. This guy has got some serious talent, and he's worked in the film industry for quite some time, and he's produced a lot of great movies so I figured I probably couldn't do too wrong by getting a movie with Woody Allen in it for a buck you know recently this year watched a movie of his called Radio Days and I gotta tell ya that's one of my new favorite movies Radio Days is a fantastic movie incredibly overlooked. I never even heard of it. And then we watched it this year and just like blown away that it isn't like a modern classic because it's really freaking good. But uh, yeah, regardless. Next up we've got Scott Pilgrim, the Steel Book. I got this uh, as they were kind of selling their last it seemed like they were selling their last stock of it and maybe not. But um, yes, this was I believe about ten bucks, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I would have loved to get it for, you know, the $4 price tag that I got for Paul for or whatever in the same series of Steelbooks, but whatever. I just I figured it was about time I got Scott Pilgrim in my collection. Uh, I had been meaning to for a long time, and so this year finally went, in, went ahead and did it. And, uh, yeah. Got the two discs in there. And very snazzy steelbook. I felt like, especially for Scott Pilgrim, this design is absolutely perfect because it's, well, it's based on a manga or, you know, a uh, graphic novel. And, you know, well, look, look, look at the style. It's a comic book style for a movie based on a comic book. That's brilliant. That's perfect. That's exactly what you should have for a, uh, for these styles of, uh, Steelbooks. There were some steelbooks in that series that just didn't make any sense to have. In fact, there were a lot that didn't make any sense to have, but this is one of the ones that did make sense to have and really looked cool as a steelbook, so I've, I, I liked it. I wanted it, and I got it. Anyway, next up we have Scream, the five-film set. 
there aren't five movies in this. There are three movies and two documentaries. I believe the documentaries are both uh, feature length. Yes, they are. But, uh, yes, I paid... This is actually going for less right now, to my recollection. This is going for seven ninety nine right now. Three movies and two documentaries for seven ninety nine. I paid nine ninety nine for it gladly, knowing that oh, I'm paying three bucks and thirty three cents per movie. That's a pretty dang good deal. Um, and yeah, uh, I had seen Scream. I had not seen Scream Two or Scream Three. And it had been so long since I saw Scream that I didn't remember a whole bunch about it. I did remember a lot of the key moments, but there was some things. There were some things that I'd forgotten. So revisiting this for Halloween was a, you know, it was fun. Uh, I wouldn't say these are great movies, but pff, three bucks per movie to put it in your collection, whatever, you know. Next up we have Shadow of a Doubt. Uh, this is another uh, Hitchcock movie that I watched in a film class, and it's a really important movie for uh, if if you're getting into learning film studies and stuff like that, and learning about uh, how movies are shot and stuff like that, and framing and all that. Uh, Shadow of a Doubt is just a masterful example of how it's done. Um, I, I've actually uh, seen a book, I believe it's a Boardwell Thompson book, about film as art. And um, in that book, they actually have like a section of, the, of a chapter where they talk about a specific scene in this movie. And they show you like pictures from, still shots from this, the scene that they're talking about in this movie for just pages on end of the still of these still shots from this particular scene in this movie. They spent a lot of time, focused a lot of energy on talking about that scene because it is so goddamn masterful. And if that's not enough reason for you to say, oh, maybe I should check this out, then I don't know what to tell you, except that this is a really good Hitchcock movie that a lot of people don't know about, don't talk about, don't think about, and completely pass over and forget and that needs to stop. That is criminal because this is just an absolutely fantastic movie from earlier in his career too. I believe it's a, yeah, 1942, 1942 movie right here. Anyway, next up we have Shaun of the Dead from a classic Alfred Hitchcock movie to Shaun of the Dead, Edgar Wright. <laughs> but, uh, Obviously, a hilarious movie, fun to watch during uh, the Halloween season and, well, just any time during the year. Uh, a great little uh, parody and jab at uh, the uh, popularity of the zombie movies and of, you know, cheesy horror movies and stuff like that. And just absolutely hilarious. Uh, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Next up we have Shawshank Redemption. How can you not have this movie in your collection nowadays? It's, I keep saying the term, but it's a modern classic. Um, infinitely quotable. Uh, one of, you know, the movies that put Frank Darabont on the map. You notice I have this and the Green Mile in uh, digibook format, and there's a purpose and there's a reason for that. <laughs> they deserve to be had in a more deluxe format because they're really good movies. Next up, I got this for four bucks on Black Friday in 2013. Sherlock Holmes. Originally, I did not really like this interpretation, but watched it again and. Uh, with a friend of mine, Sean, and I actually really liked it the second time I watched it, uh, at least enough that I thought, yeah, it's worth a buy. And then when I saw it for four bucks, I was like, alrighty then, done. And since I got that one, I figured, hey, this one was also four dollars. Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. I still haven't seen this one yet, but I 
bought it intending to watch it with my friend Sean since he, uh, you know, made me rewatch Sherlock Holmes and I appreciated it more the second time and all that. So, I figured, well, we might as well get this one and then we can watch it together and, you know, have a blast. Um, anyway, haven't, uh, we haven't gotten around to that yet, but I'm sure maybe in the next year or two we will. Next up, The Shinnin! The Shinnin! Uh, some people say this is overrated. Uh, Brandon, in particular, hates that people call this a horror movie. Or, well, I don't know if it's that he hates that people call it a horror movie or that he hates that people call Kubrick a horror director when this was, like, his only real horror movie. Um, but, yeah. Um, he's a... It's a really good movie. It's a really great movie... There have been movies made about this movie. This movie's been referenced in so many different media forms. And there's a reason for it, and it's because it's so freaking good and creepy. And the atmosphere in the movie is just thick. It's, it's great. Love it. And it looks great on Blu-ray, by the way. Next up, I got this for $5. Two movies, $5.00. Short Circuit and Short Circuit 2. How can you go wrong with that? This is pure nostalgia for me because I can recognize as an adult that these aren't necessarily great movies, but they're still fun, and I have a certain nostalgia for them, so of course I want them in my collection. And it was a little hard for me to find this set for a pretty good price for a while. And then, uh, when I, then I saw it for a sale, a pre-Black Friday sale, for what essentially was $5. It's like, sold, man. I've been looking for that just to be sub $10 for the longest time. And here it is for 5 Done and done, sir. Next up we have Silence of the Lambs, which I believe is another one I got for two, no, $4, I'm sorry. On Black Friday in 2013. This is a great... Uh, can't really call it a horror, can you? As I was watching this, I was thinking to myself, this isn't actually a horror. I mean, there's some horrific things that happen in it, scary things that happen in it, but it's more of like a thriller, right? It's more of a crime thriller movie uh, with some horror elements to it. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine because it's still an excellent film. And I absolutely love it. Um, as I watched it the last time, I thought about some of the more... Uh, I hesitate to say feminist because to me, feminism has really changed in such a way that I don't really... I'm not going to get into it. But uh, it, it's definitely it definitely is empowering for women, I would say. There are a lot of empowering female aspects to this movie and I really dig movies like that that go the extra mile and try to make a more, make a more empowering uh, statement for women. As I noted when I was doing going through my DVD collection uh, how I had like Monster and uh, uh, what was the other one? North Country all these Charlize Theron movies but yeah, this is another one that was kind of highly influential to some of the, those kinds of movies that you see today. And it holds up just as well today. And honestly, I don't think... Without this movie, there is no Hannibal. There is no every Hannibal-related movie that came after it. You know, this whole franchise doesn't exist without this movie. And it's not just because it made a lot of money, it's because it was really freaking good. And it showed you that this story could be brought to screen very well, and that people would buy it up, eat it up. Um, I haven't seen Man... Is it Man Eater or Man Hunter? I think it's Man Hunter, one that is the story that it's based on. I haven't seen the movie before this one, essentially, yet. But I've been told that I absolutely need to. It's a necessity. Next up, Sin City. Amazing on Blu-ray. This is the uh, theatrical and recut extended and unrated versions all on this. Bunch of bonus features. 
Um, I recall loving the visual style of this and uh, thinking that the story was very dark and brooding and very, you know, visceral. I hate to use that term. It's an overused film junky term. But, uh, yes, it was... You saw me choke that out, right? <laughs> sometimes I'll say, I'll throw it in there sometimes just to be like, well, it is in this case. I feel like that definitely fits. But if I don't feel like it fits and I catch myself saying it, I'm like, ing, 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 stop. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a really good movie. Uh, I don't know anyone who really hates Sin City. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to seeing the second one. At some point. Next up, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, which was sent to me by my friend Travis. And uh, it's a great movie, highly underrated in my opinion, with an amazing visual style that looks great on Blu-ray, in my opinion. Next up, we have Sleepy Hollow. It's all... We're... I still have half a stack to get through, and we are over f almost 17 minutes in. But yes, Sleepy Hollow, the Johnny Depp movie. Uh, I got this for Halloween. I watched through it, and I realized after watching through it, like, this is not that good of a movie. First of all, this transfer on this Blu-ray is very meh. It's very not good. Um, but second of all, the, uh, the movie is not that good great. It's kind of more of a miss than a hit. Uh, I strongly prefer the Disney animated version of this story, uh, which I think says something, but at the same time, it's not horrible. It's it's serviceable. It's pretty good. It's not... If it's a 5 out of 10, it's on the plus side of 5 out of 10. And yes, I have read that story, and I'm familiar with it, the actual story, I, I am familiar, so don't give me none of that. None of that. Don't want none of that. Uh, so I married an axe murderer. How can you go wrong with this movie? This is, to me, it's one of those movies from my childhood that I fondly remember and really, like, it was one of those that kind of introduced me to Mike Myers. Uh, well... Wayne's World introduced me and then this was just like oh he can do other stuff as well and he can be funny doing that and he just was absolutely hilarious in this movie and I believe Stephen Wright is also in this and he plays a pilot and there's this scene where he's being a like the most terrifyingly bad pilot you've ever seen in your life and it's freaking outrageously hilarious I roll on the floor with laughter every time I see that rottle raffle raffle copter rottle but yes um, to me it's a modern classic it's one that I know that I love and I watch a lot it's one of my favorite comedy movies and hey it's sort of a rom-com right anyways moving on we have Source code. Remember I was talking about Duncan Jones and how he did Moon and then he did another movie? Uh, this was the other movie that I was trying to remember that I have in my collection. Unfortunately, this is the rental only copy. But what are you going to do? Um, I got it for a fairly low price. I think it was like three bucks or something like that on Go Hastings and uh, so I can't really complain too much about that and it does I believe come with uh, some special features it comes with the audio commentary so it's not like one of those completely bare bones rental releases so I can't complain too much about that and after seeing Moon uh, I really wanted to see what he did next, and this is what he did next, and it was actually really freaking good. Um, you know how I mentioned Buried earlier in the B section, the Buried movie that everyone uh, that's I feel like is underrated? Source Code, 
I feel like it's very similar to that in that, you know, there there's an aspect to it that's only, you know, you're stuck in one area for a while, and that's the only area you get to see. But regardless of that, it still holds up to me. It still does the job well enough to, uh, you know, make me want to buy it and make it an enjoyable thriller sci-fi movie that is just really freaking awesome if you haven't seen moon or source code i highly recommend that you check these out it, yeah owe it to yourself you really do next up space balls um got this for black friday this year for four dollars and uh, I got it primarily because it had this really cool faceplate. And this is the only one of these particular faceplates that I, sorry, that I really liked. So, uh, yeah. You gotta have a space balls in your collection. It's just a classic Mel Brooks comedy. So, of course, you gotta have it in there. I figured if I was gonna get it, get it cheap for four bucks and get it with this cool faceplate. Yeah. This one I got for under four dollars. I believe it was like three fifty something. Uh, Speed Racer. Whew. This looks so freaking good on Blu-ray. It's eye candy. Uh, and that's the thing. This a lot of people went into this expecting something, and then they didn't get that, and they weren't happy because of that. But. If you don't go into it with any expectations, I didn't go into it with any expectations. I was just thinking, ah, a Wachowski Brothers movie. I hope it's entertaining. And it was. It was very entertaining. Uh, certain aspects of it don't work too well, but other aspects of it are just freaking phenomenal. I look at it, as I said originally when we were talking about this, when I hold, held it up, as eye candy. Uh, you go into it looking for some kind of a spectacle, and if you get a decent story out of it, then you get a decent story out of it, and that's cool. And I feel like I got a decent story out of this. So, yeah. Fun times to be had. Taking it from the... Uh, go going from that to, you know, a much more artistic, so to speak, movie, let's... <laughs> check out Spring Breakers. I got Spring Breakers. Um, a lot of people, of course, didn't get this. They didn't get the uh, social commentary that's just rife throughout this movie. Uh, the fact that like the, the everything in it is intentional and it's, you know, it's not, it, it was mismarketed and that, a lot of people just missed the point of it. But yes, freaking fantastic movie. Uh, if you get it, then, like, if you understand what they're doing with the movie, then you'll love it. If you don't understand, you're probably going to hate it. I'll put it that way. Next up, Stargate. I originally had the original release of this, which had a horrible freaking transfer, and then, uh, they came out with the 15th anniversary edition. <laughs> Yeah, I got that one for like five bucks on sale. And it has the original original theatrical version and the unrated extended version of the film. So, you know, along with a lot of our other ex, extra special features, and to my knowledge, a better transfer. So, yeah, can't go wrong with that. I'm glad I updated, upgraded. Um, next up is one that my friend Ron sent me. This is the... Blu-ray for the new Star Trek movie, which a lot of people did not like, but I felt like was pretty dang good. Maybe it's not the greatest thing ever, and it definitely takes a lot of liberties with the Star Trek universe, and it definitely, uh, you know, changes the way that we look at Star Trek, and it's more of a adventurous... It, it's the Star Wars of Star Trek now. Star Trek has been turned into Star Wars, essentially. And when I when this first came out, I, I said that... Uh, after walking out of the theater, I said... That was J.J. Abrams... Uh, uh, not knowing that he would have this chance. I just said... 
Like, if he ever got a chance to do a Star Wars movie, that would be J.J. Abrams' freaking resume right there. Star Trek is his resume for Star Wars. And it didn't really... That's why I was like, oh my god, no way. But it didn't really surprise me that much either that J.J. Abrams got to direct the first new Star Wars movie. And, you know... I'm like, well, that's a perfect fit because this is ex essentially Star Trek in Star Wars form. He knows how to do his. He knows how to do it, you know. So uh, when I saw that, I was very pleased. And yes, I'm very pleased to have this movie. By the way, thank you, Ron, once more. He gave it to me for my birthday this year. So yeah, pretty cool. Back here. Next up, another J.J. Abrams movie, Super 8. Which, no, it's this way. Alright. Yeah. There's, you got the landscape there. I much prefer this uh, cover to the one that has, like, the... The annoyingly miscolored, miscolored Super 8 in yellow and red and... It just it didn't work. It didn't work. But, um... Holy crap, a digital copy code. I wonder if it's been used. I don't know. But, uh... Yeah. Uh, I really like this movie. It's a har It harkens back to Spielberg movies and to... Well, bas basically the Spielberg movies of the 80s that were all about a bunch of kids getting together and you know, discovering something or doing something and, you know, fighting for something. And they were all really good movies. And if you like Super 8, another one came out like that this year, I believe, called Earth to Echo, which wasn't really great, and it was definitely a movie for, like, Generation uh, Y or Z. But, um like for the next generation essentially but I think it did justice to the kind of format of this kind of format of movie and it was pretty dang good it wasn't fantastic but it was pretty dang good and yeah if you like Super 8 you should check out Earth Echo next up oh we're down to the last three thank god Super Bad you know I didn't pay much for this one I think I paid like five bucks for it but yeah I really loved uh, well really loved I like Superbad. I had a blast with it in theaters. Much more of a blast than I thought I was going to have with it. And, um, yeah, I just think it's a hilarious movie that uh, people... That it's underrated and people give it too much flack. I'll put it that way. But, yeah. Got Superbad. Two-disc unrated extended edition. Next, Super Troopers. How can you go wrong with Super Troopers? Uh, this is a hilarious movie um, by Broken Lizard, and they've gone on to do a few good things and a few bad things, and, well, I'm hopeful to see more good things than bad things in the future, and I'm pretty sure they're actually working on a sequel for this. But, yeah, very good movie. Uh, a lot of memorable quotes that I... I do quote from time to time in this movie. Um, of the shenanigans quote. Uh, yeah. Just blark. That's the only one I can think of right now. Anyway. Last but not least is one I got for 288 from uh, Big Lots this Black Friday. And that would be Sweetwater. I got it because it's a new western starring Ed Harris which I previously have said I like Ed Harris. So, yeah, there's that. Haven't seen it yet, but, well, paid 288 for it. I'll watch it when I want to. <laughs> it's just in there so that, you know, when I'm bored and I want to watch a new movie, but I don't have anything and the Internet's out and, you know, I'll have, I have a few movies in my collection that I haven't seen yet. And that's one of them. So, Ugh, 
Man, I need a drink. Uh, there we go. Cherry limeade. Well, it's been 30 minutes, folks, and that's how long it took me to get through all my S titles. I tell you what, the T's, U's, V's, W, X, Y, Z's, those are not going to be that long. They're not going to be as long because I can tell you just by looking behind me, the, the, the piles are not as big as the yes pile was. So, look forward to those next. Um, and look forward to shrinking the ever-shrinking video length <laughs> from here on out. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you there. Bye-bye.